With the Republican nomination now just a two-person race, Donald Trump leading in the polls. Could tomorrow's primary mark the beginning of the end in the Republican primary? NBC senior Washington correspondent Hallie Jackson also in Manchester for us. So, Hallie, Nikki Haley gets the two-person race she's been right. longing for. Is it too late? And even if she somehow pulls off the upset in New Hampshire, then what? Well, then you go to Nevada, then you go to South Carolina. Listen, it's not over till it's over, Savannah, but you're asking, I think, the critical question here, because, yes, Nikki Haley finally has what she wants, this one-on-one -on -one matchup. The question now, what is she going to do with it? How is she going to make a showing here in New Hampshire? Her campaign has said all along they're playing the momentum card here, right, that if she picks up some steam, she can show that she can be a viable contender to former President Trump. But if she doesn't do well in New Hampshire, the question is, what happens next? Does she go to her home state, which tends to lean more conservative in the Republican electorate? Here in New Hampshire, remember, it's independents that are the critical voting block here. They can vote in a Republican primary. They are the biggest voting block in New Hampshire. And that is, in many ways, a natural constituency for Nikki Haley. I've heard it from people that I've talked to here in the state, people who, for example, were former Chris Christie backers that are now shifting over to Nikki Haley. But if she doesn't have a very strong second or the upset here, it is a question mark on where her campaign goes. Uh, and that said, for, for Donald Trump, don't we, we can't lose sight of the big picture here, Savannah. He has dominated for months in this race overall. He is still ahead in the polling in this state and in many of the states to come. Uh, he has demonstrated his strength and his consistency here. We're seeing double-digit leads in New Hampshire primaries and South Carolina, while it's her home state, Tim Scott from South Carolina just endorsed Trump, so it's unclear right. what that path would be, even if she pulls off the big win tomorrow. Now, let's talk about Ron DeSantis, Hallie, because he got out on the eve of the New Hampshire primary. What do you think's in his mind? Is he thinking about potentially a presidential run in four years, or is he thinking maybe I'll be part of the Trump cabinet? What do you, what do you see here? I think the calculus, based on the reporting that I've done, is the 2028 piece of it. And I know we're not even through 2024 yet. Don't shoot the messenger. But I will tell you that that is a conversation that is happening with those close to Ron DeSantis about a potential presidential run four years from now. He himself has even alluded to this on the campaign trail, saying in South Carolina just this week, right before he dropped out, that voters would come up to him, caucus goers, and say things like, hey, I'm getting Trump this time, Mr. Trump this time, I'll get you for the next election. So that seems to be part of the calculation here, that he can get out of this race after, listen, a distant second place showing, but at least it wasn't third, and then perhaps come back in four years and show that he is somebody who can win a critically important state like Florida as it relates to, you know, the electoral makeup there, uh, and still be kind of a player in the Republican field. Keep in mind as to when DeSantis started to slip in polling, Savannah, if you look back to the spring, it was right as Donald Trump faced his first indictment there at the end of March. DeSantis hadn't officially announced his presidential run, but everybody saw the writing on the wall. He seemed to be potentially the strongest contender, the strongest competitor for Donald Trump until the court battle started coming into play. People around Donald Trump believe that that is something that helps propel him with voters. Eric Trump told me that. He said that he thinks that the sort of looming indictments over the former president help him in his campaign. That is when we saw the needle start to move, and we haven't really seen it move back since, Savannah. And that's why we see Donald Trump so often volunteering to be in those courtrooms. That's effective for him, it seems. Hallie, thank you. And Hallie will be back with us tomorrow morning along with NBC's Kristen Welker and Steve Kornacki. Gang's all here as the very latest Bold unfolds in New Hampshire voting underway tomorrow. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't miss the Today Show every weekday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 8 Pacific on our streaming channel, Today All Day. To watch, head to today.com slash all day or click the link right here.